Andrew McCaw, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted again, and I'm I'm mesmerised right now. Dolce and Gabbana. Yeah, no, yeah. I said in Andy's interview, they've been on, actually. Um, just said, obviously, plus sizes right now are in. <laughs> so they, they think I've got potential for the new catalogue. So, yeah. They or you? D uh, Dolce and Cabana. Yeah, both of them. I've got a little clip of that little clip, and it's doing quite good numbers, man. Yeah, so people are liking the Dolce and Cabana jam. It's like, obviously, I know I look like a tit. So, but you can't take yourself too seriously, can you? And some people are replying, going, "Why are you wearing that? You look—I know I look like a complete knob." But hey, enjoy life. Exactly. exactly. Enjoy life. Enjoy pajamas. Exactly. Well, that, listen, if, if I can get a pair of them, I can one day afford a pair. See the ones here. Problem is, he's a bit on the cool side, isn't he, Canelo? I don't want to keep—I'm you know, getting a bit of stick at the moment from like because I'm sort of bigging him up all the time because I do think he's cool. A yeah. bit, a little bit of a fanboy. Yeah. I want to just go back to this card then, the weigh-ins there, what kind of fight are you hoping for tomorrow night? Yildirim and his manager, I spoke to Amit, who's batshit crazy, but I love it. Um, I spoke to him yesterday, he's very confident, he says like Yildirim is like uh, a Golovkin, he's strong like Golovkin, he's going to come to fight, are you hoping that's the case tomorrow night? Yeah, you know, Amit, I love Amit, he, you're right, he's crazy. Um, and we sat down for breakfast this morning, he was like, what, what do you think, like honestly, about the fight? And I said, I think your man get beat I said but I hope that he gives us a great fight he went I think our man's gonna win but you always fall in love with your guy do you know what I mean like you always think he's gonna win I've done it a million times come over here as a 20 to 1 underdog thinking do you know what I just think you know if he puts it together if he does this he does that so I think the great thing about Yildirim is he's got plenty of heart right and he's tough and I don't think he's gonna come in and just think I'm going to survive a few rounds and see how it goes. I think he's going to try and win. The problem with doing that is Canelo is p potentially unbeatable. Canelo is a fantastic counter puncher. His defence is excellent. He's great on the front foot. He's great on the back foot. So I see a Canelo stoppage inside seven rounds. But I do expect Yildirim to show plenty of heart. But I just think he won't be good enough. Uh, Martinez is off the card with a hand injury. Um, I spoke to Mick Williams yesterday in an interview. He doesn't quite believe, because he looked at the carpet and he says, where's that carpet in the hotel? So he's doing a little bit of detective work. Um, he doesn't believe that carpet is in the hotel. Yeah, so he's got, it did happen, didn't it? If you watch the press conference back, so I'll tell you what happened. I got a phone call five minutes before the press conference to say, looks like Martinez is off, he's busted his hand. So I was like, and then they phoned me back and they said, he's going to do the press conference and see the doctor after. He turned up at the press conference, his hand was absolutely battered. I mean, it was like a balloon. If you watch the press conference back, you, you can actually see it, because I saw it last night, because he, he couldn't shut it. So I knew the fight was off when we were doing a press conference. It was very difficult, because the kid's sitting there like in tears. With all due respect to McWilliams Arroyo, like, they don't get paid if they don't fight. Do you know what I mean? Julio Cesar Martinez hasn't boxed for a while. He's desperate to fight. He's desperate to get paid. He's desperate to defend his title, especially on this show. So he's absolutely devastated. He went to the hospital. Uh, they've actually put his hand in a cast. He has a fracture or whatever it is. Um, and gutted. But thank you to uh, Juan Carlos and Sean Gibbons and uh, Maurizio Suleiman. We've made a great fight with Abraham Rodriguez. Uh, came in from Mexico. Uh, fought for the world title before he's fighting at Williams Arroyo for the interim title. Gutted it's not Julio Cesar Martinez, but we replaced that fight. Um, it's a really good fight with Diego Pacheco against uh, Alfonso Gomez. I think he's 18 and 1. It's a big, big fight. I like Zhang against Jerry Forrest. Jerry Forrest is bang up for it. And Zhang, I, I rate Zhang, but he's, that's actually the, the toughest fight of his career so far. So we'll see how he gets on. Keishawn Davis, Mark Castro, Espino's in a really tough fight as well. So it's a good card, and we've got a lot of special plans tomorrow night. We're going OTT. We're going large. We're going large and in charge, as they say. And uh, yeah, going to be a special show. Definitely looking forward to it. You touched on Zhang there. I want to just mention something. He said to me in my interview that he would love to face Anthony Joshua in China. Big market over there. You've not been there, I don't think. Well, I don't no, think you have ever. So, and you like to expand to different territories. Is that a possibility one day? It would be massive. It would be massive. I just think Zhang, at the moment, I feel a bit sorry for Zhang because everyone keeps saying it to him. So it's like, is your, is your dream Anthony Joshua at the Bird's Nest? Of course it is, but he's got to beat quality opposition to get there. So right now he's like hovering around the top 15 in the world, but if he beats Forrest, he's going to need a, I don't know, a Chisora or a, um, even a, like a Washington or a Hellenius or like, you know, those kind of wins, yeah, to, to show that he's ready for a world title. But for me as a promoter, of course, six foot, 
seven Chinese heavyweight who can fight. It's a dream come true, and I, I rate him, and I really like him as well. Yeah. Love, lovely fella. Um, I want to go to some tweets, and I'm not, I don't really do these tweet things, but I did see Bob Arum said that in an interview that um, if you try and put a bid in against him again, then he's going to stick it up your ass, mm. or stick it in your ass, or whatever. I can't remember what he said, but I hope it wasn't in your ass. But um, you're, you're, you're <laughs> this is going to this took a this took a left turn quick. This took a left turn quick. Yeah. Um, your your thoughts on that? I know like you and Bob go back and forth quite a lot, but he seems really pissed off, yeah, and to lack of a better word, because he didn't get his own way. Because he can't handle it when people don't do as they're told. And because he's lost the plot, because he don't care anymore. I mean, what he's saying about his fighters is so damaging to the image of top rank. You're not talking about a couple of guys who haven't really achieved anything, who have an inflated perception of their value. You're talking about Teofimo Lopez that just beat Vasily Lomachenko for the undisputed or semi-undisputed lightweight world title and Terence Crawford who is a pound for pound unbelievable fighter so like these fighters are going to get pissed off real quick Tiafimo you've seen his tweets he wants to go so what well, that would that would be the salt in a wound wouldn't it but but listen you can't just phone other promoters and other networks and say oh don't bid on this fight because you have an obligation to do the best for your fighter you have an obligation to maximize the revenue for your fighter and by telling other people not to bid one it rubs them up the wrong way and two, it's not on, right? As Tiafimo called it, well, cock blocking or something like that. So the whole thing was a mess and it's getting worse and worse and worse for Bob and Top Rank. If I was him, I would just draw a line under it and move on because he's coming out of it really bad. But the problem is, like I said, he's 89 or 90 or whatever he is. He does not care what he says, which you have to respect in a way. Everything he says is, is, is his opinion, but if I'm, if I'm working at top rank, if I'm looking at the business, I'm now going, oh my God. Listen, sometimes I do it. My dad will do an interview. I think, what's he talking about? And I know that's what they're doing at top rank. But Bobby's a legend. It's the old school mentality then, is it? Well, it is the old school mentality, but it's the game's changed. The fighters are the bosses, right? And back in Bob's day, he was the boss. And he still thinks he's the boss. He still thinks he can call me and say, listen, no, don't do that, don't do that. As a good boy. You know, don't say anything about Fury Joshua. Keep keep your mouth shut now, all right, mate? You know. And, you know, um, to the fighters, do that, you're getting that, you're getting that. It doesn't work like that. They're the talent. They're the guys that are risking their health and sometimes their lives for our entertainment. So, like I said, it's not just a case of giving out money to someone that doesn't have that value. But when they've achieved what those kind of fighters have achieved, you have to respect them. Teofimo Lopez is like the top name or one of the top names in his stable. And he's gone. All because of silly argument or he didn't want to pay him the money. You know, but but listen, Bob has to at the same time pay the money that he perceives to be the right money. So if he thinks the right money for that fight was 2.3 million, that's his opinion and he's very knowledgeable. My perception of that fight was 3.5 million. And that's what I bid, yeah. Trillers was off the chart because they're disruptive. Two years ago, we were disruptive. We had to do the same thing. No one knew who DAZN was. We had to come in, we had to establish ourselves in the market. And we had to do that by overpaying for fights. And, you know, although you can sit there and moan about what Triller pay, why not sit there and say, how good is it that someone else is in town, right? Because hopefully Triller will put DAZN on notice and ESPN on notice and we'll get competitive and we'll continue to make great fights. And the good news is the fighters are sitting there going, oh, Triller, who is Triller? I don't even know who they are, but they're paying money, right? So, good luck. Good luck to Tiafimo and George Cambosis. Let them, let them enjoy it. I'm so pleased. Bob, Tiafimo's going to go on for a long time. He's going to make a lot of money. But but George Cambosis, he's just, he's made his life. Right? I just wish Lee Selby would have bloody beat him. I know. Um, again, and by the way, you can't sit there and goad about your commission that you're taking off a fire. So he's out there now going, well, I didn't bid. Well, I made 800,000 in a couple of minutes. So good day for me. Do you know how bad that looks? So what you're saying is you wanted to underpay your fighters and now you're taking 800,000 off your fighter. Anyway. 
Um, you mentioned that Bob Arum doesn't really give a, a crap anymore because he's things, but that's not going to jeopardise your relationship to make this fight with AJ Fury because I know we've been waiting, fans have been waiting for this for so long, especially us in the UK as fight fans. We want this fight to happen, but that's not going to hinder any negotiations because, you, like you say, he doesn't care anymore, Bob, so does he? To be honest, like, again, when you talk about fighters being the bosses, Tyson Fury's the boss in that situation, just like Anthony Joshua's the boss. If I fell out with Bob Arum, it doesn't matter because I've got a job to do for Anthony Joshua. I don't let ego get in the way of doing good business for my fighter and my client and my mate so no I mean unless he wants to be difficult I don't think he don't even have the power in that situation to be difficult like the powers with the fighters make the fight and he'll sulk he'll moan and then he'll want something and he'll call me and be nice uh, well, there's fights on tonight that you, you've you got three sh three shows in two days that you tweet, uh, tweeted out and put on Instagram uh, tonight Parker versus Far. your thoughts on that fight tomorrow night sorry tonight's, tonight's the Scardina. Italian yeah, yeah sorry Milan tonight for Scardina and then tomorrow morning, about 9, 9 a.m. UK time, brilliant fight. Uh, Joseph Parker against Junior Far, Battle of New Zealand. Both guys look in tremendous shape. Joe looks great. Uh, that's at 9 o'clock. And then, of course, Canelo Alvarez coming in uh, from Miami. Probably start time about midnight UK time. So tune in on the zone. Definitely. Um, one final word on this fight tomorrow night. You, you promised fireworks. Uh, it's going to be a tremendous atmosphere. We've seen it in San Antonio, only 12,000, 15,000 there. Imagine if that was full, imagine if this was full, but what can we expect tomorrow? This is on another level. I mean, production wise, entertainment wise, what we've got planned for tomorrow night, this is on another level. And I think you're going to get a good main event. I think Canelo's going to do the business in style. And I think you're going to get a good card. And you're going to get unbelievable entertainment, big names, big stars, big pyros, big fireworks, big entrances. We're going large tomorrow night in Miami. Cannot wait. I think this gentleman to my left has been waiting patiently for you already, so thank you so much for doing this TV and uh, no doubt I'll catch you soon. Cheers. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's a good move. We were talking to him actually about making a big old fight. So hopefully with Golden Royal we can make that fight. You think that was good or what? Yeah, I think it was good. I'm not sure he wants to fight. I think Zerdo's one of those guys where he don't think he really wants to take too much risk yet. You know, and yeah, that's a very risky time. Yes, many times. Many times. Eddie, uh, who was just done an interview with Big John Fury? I'm I mean, about this. Uh, well, you should be. He basically said, I will spank Eddie Hearn like a kid. Sign the fucking paper. Yeah. Your reaction? Big John Fury? You, you know I'm scared of Big John Fury. Yep. Can he just, can he not do it too hard? So, <laughs> John Fury's going to get his wish. And we're going to have a lot of fun in the build up to the biggest fight in boxing. When is that fight going to get announced, Eddie? Uh, I hope this week.